<laughs> so I just want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Jasmine and I am the community manager here at Canadian Gap Year Association. Um, I and the Canadian Gap Year Association literally exists to support students through the decision making, the planning, the leading of purposeful and epic gap years that make sense to not only your futures, but like having a good time. How do you make this a an experiential, you know, journey that just can 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 really be this once in a lifetime opportunity to set you up for success in all areas of your life. And, you know, I'm really excited about this conversation because when it comes to students of color, um, that journey can look very, very different. And, um, you know, I speak from experience as someone, I, I'm a mixed kid who grew up in Toronto and, you know, didn't, had no idea what I wanted to do when I finished high school. And the idea of a gap year was something that nobody even presented to me. And it was also this fear with like one immigrant parent who's like, uh, I don't think it's a good idea for you to ever take a break um, and wanting to kind of push me to continue to be successful, especially as like the first kid to like go off to college and university. Um, and that was a kind of like this scary moment and then taking a break and deciding to travel and invest in my future through hands-on experience and community development um, was the biggest thing that I could have ever done for my life because it's actually uh, the my gap is what took me to travel the world and end up working in development and working with youth and I'm so so grateful for it so and and I'm so excited to speak with Anthony and Stephen today um, I'm sure a few of you that are watching um, read the amazing CBC article all about their journey. Um, we were so honored to be featured alongside of y'all because your stories are so beautiful. And I'd love... Just give a quick introduction to yourselves before we jump into everything. Just a little bit of current too and kind of what led you here today. So Anthony, do you want to kick us off? Um, yeah, sure. So my name is Anthony Russell. I am 19 years old. Um, and I would like to say I'm an artist um, living and creating in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, I decided to take a gap year because online life just wasn't what I was expecting at the moment. Like, it wasn't... I, it wasn't living up to my expectations, uh, paying the high tuition prices to be at home. The workload was the same. Um, and it was just really taking a toll on my mental health um, all in all. So I just decided that I was just gonna take a gap here to really focus on my art and kind of set myself up uh, for the future, if that makes sense. Absolutely, beautiful. And Steven? Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, as mentioned, my name is Steven. I serve as the executive director of the Toronto Youth Cabinet, which is the city of Toronto's official advisory body. And I also uh, serve in the office of Toronto Mayor John Tory. Uh, and I guess my journey and I guess what that kind of led me here was just some of the sentiments like online learning was not here for me, like the second you shifted to online. I'm like, how am I even gonna do this? And I was like really worried about my <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, like, I, I, I kind of dug it out over the, like for a month or semester. So not a month, but a semester. And uh, it, it was okay. But then when we, like the whole year, like just starting from like September, like of last term, I'm like, it, it just wasn't it. It was just getting more harder and like, just learning, seeing how last semester, previously, went of in my second year, teachers were not as engaged. They were just kind of giving you a bunch of work and not really um, walking you through it. And that kind of in-person engagement with your peers was not really present. So I made a decision uh, about around like mid of the first semester that I'm gonna take a gap year or just take a take the rest of the semester off next year, which is this year, uh, and just like focus on my mental health. Um, not ruin my marks any longer because I'm like, I can't afford to ruin my marks and like, like, lower my GPA. So I'm like, let me just move away from that. Um, and yeah, it's kind of like letting me to take this gap year to just refresh, uh, you know, rejuvenate and just you know, focus on my craft and some, and some of the projects that I'm working on right now. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'm curious, like as you both, you know, after you decided you were taking this time off from your education, what kind of planning went into your prep? 
Um, okay. And you're welcome for the rest of the panel to just popcorn style, like just jump in whenever you want. So what, what kind of led you through your preparations for your gap year? You wanna go first? <laughs> uh, I, I, I say what the plan and that led, uh, that I guess I did was, first when I said in this, in, this, said this in the article, like, I believe was intentional about it. I just didn't wake up kind of like one day, I'm like, I'm not going to school next semester and then just left like that. But I kind of made sure that okay, if I am going to um, take this semester off for the rest of the year off in 2022, I really wanted to make sure I was being productive and actually um, doing something that was going to benefit um, my personal professional life. And so I was applying to the job that I'm in right now, working in the office of Toronto Mayor. Um, and so I saw this opportunity was there. So I'm just like, let me apply for that. It's around the same time where. Um, I would be able, like, I would have taken my gap year, and so, like, when we apply, thankfully, I was able to get the job, and so, I guess some of the thought process and some of the things that came to mind was, okay, I'm going to make sure that uh, I get this certain job that I want that's going to help me in my political life. Um, I'm also going to um, uh, just, I guess, uh, academically, too, because there's so much prep work that I need to do to make sure that when I did come back from school, or when I do go back to school, I'm not behind necessarily. Totally. So I just have mm -hmm. to make sure all my academics were kind of straight and, and right. But I think all in all, like, the, my thought process and decision making was, okay, I so said I'm going to take a gap year. I wanted to make sure that, like I said, I was doing things that were going to be productive and assist me uh, in my personal and professional goals. And so kind of laid out that plan and laid out some goals that I was really hoping to achieve. And so far, I've been able to achieve most of them. Beautiful. That's amazing, actually, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and like, to be honest, that's essentially what I did as well, was just making sure that when I was taking this gap year, it was to, it wasn't, oh, I'm taking a year off. I get to kick my feet up and relax and kind of play video games. It was make sure that I'm still working towards goals and um, trying to better myself, making sure I was still uh, staying productive, um, you know, getting better at my art, um, you know, doing these, dipping my toes into the teaching and everything like that. Uh, because in the article, I did say I wanted to um, kind of shift my education and then I was leaning towards more of like a teaching role. Um, still kind of uh, going to stay with my um, undergrad there with the law crime and just law crime and justice because that is something that I really am interested in is like the po uh, politics and social and everything like that. So that's something I wanted to keep um, doing, but just making sure that what I was doing in my off time was going to set me up for when I do decide to go back to school and when I do decide to take that um, next leap forward, um, just making sure that I was really set up and not just, you know, taking this year off as like, oh, okay, I get to, I get to chill out. I had a, I had a hard year of like online studies. I get to, I deserve this kind of situation. So just like Steven said, it was just kind of making sure I was staying productive. I want to yeah. take you back quickly, if I may. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Just being kicked up. And I think it's not a negative thing to just simply sit there and do nothing and relax. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we deserve, like, we deserve it. However, I'd say plan. Uh, don't wait till you act the time of day one of get your gap year and then say, okay, you know, I'm going to figure it out. I have a couple of weeks left or I have a month, yeah. couple of months to figure it out. Because I feel like most folks, are not gonna figure it out. They're gonna enjoy the rest of the time watching Netflix, playing video games. <laughs> um, I think it kind of reinforces the need to make sure, um, even before um, you day one of you know your gap year, the beginning of the gap year, you have all these uh, plan and goals that you want to achieve to avoid you know complacency and lazy, so to speak. Following that. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that the biggest challenges that we see with gap year students is like when they're feeling so stuck in the middle of their gap year, it's because there was no intention in preparation before entering that that time off. Um, and it sounds like both of you really set yourself up for success in terms of thinking about what happens when I go into the year and or the semester and what happens when I come out of it, um, which I think is also that missing piece where a lot of students get lost in the mix of like, 
oh crap, now I have to think about how I'm transitioning back into my studies or what I'm doing after this. And sometimes that actually leads to a second gap year, which obviously is no issue, but you want to make sure that you are obviously setting up some kind of goals and you are working towards something throughout your year. Um, rest is obviously still important, but I mean, a one year or one full semester of just rest and not really considering those next steps is going to be more challenging in the end than anything. And I think what's so fascinating for the two of you, because both of you are post-secondary students who are taking a break. Um, and I don't usually get to talk to post-secondary students who are taking a break. I usually talk to high school students. And um, you're both doing very impressive studies. Like you have big degrees that you're working towards. And, and like what I love is like, Anthony is like, you've taken your time off to do something completely different, which is like step into your creative self. And I'm, I'm so curious to like how that has been shaping kind of, you know, what your next steps are and how you might bring the creative aspect maybe more to your life as you uh, move through your, your law degree, because it's such a heavy, it's so, it's so crazy to think of it. Sorry, you chipped out for like the last five seconds of that. Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just curious, like, you know, because because you've been putting intentional time into like the creative self and also teaching. I'm just curious to how it's impacted your journey so far and kind of okay. as you work towards those next steps since you are in such a such a big and very opposite degree when it comes mm -hmm. to uh, law and creative creative side. Yeah, so um, I would just say that it was honestly just a big eye opener. Um, as I said previously, like I do want to continue with the law, crime, and justice undergrad because I do love the politics. I do love the social aspect of of that. So um, I do want to continue doing that. But being able to take this time to really dive into my creative side um, really opened up my eyes to say, wow. This is something that you actually care about. This is something that you're passionate about because I realized that I wasn't putting in the same amount of time and effort into anything else than when I was like creating. Um, but then this like the teaching opportunities came about, um, and I was like, I didn't really teaching wasn't on my on my radar ever because to me, what I thought of a successful job was doctor, lawyer engineer, social worker, things like uh, things like that. So teaching was never in my like in my forefront, to be honest. Um, but after doing the first session, I was like, OK, this is something that I actually really enjoy because with my art, I have a message that I want to share and I want to educate people with my art. Um, but what better way to educate than to be an educator? is what I was thinking. And I was like, I love to teach and I love to teach. I love my art. Um, so I was like, why don't I teach my art? And I was like, well, what is this like crazy job that I can teach and produce art and have my social and my politics? I was like, oh, there's something called a teacher, you know, <laughs> where, I can, <laughs> where I could possibly teach social studies and still have that social aspect, aspect in my life. But then, you know, maybe teach art as well and still have that creative aspect in my life as well. So honestly, it was just really a big eye opener to all the avenues that I wasn't really thinking of before. Yeah, that's beautiful. Steven, is she chipping up for Love me too? hearing those, yeah, she's those stories. Yeah. <laughs> stories of like gap years. I was oh, no. Am I back? You're back. <laughs> Am I back? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think it's so beautiful to hear these stories of like using your gap to explore professions and experiences that you never really would have had the time to do. Um, and like even those photos, like the photos and just in the article and on your Instagram, like they 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 warm my heart because it looks like you're totally in your element. And it sounds like this was like this amazing opportunity for you to finally step into this role. And who knows where it could lead, you know? Like yeah. there is an opportunity to take all of your passions and put them in a blender and make something beautiful. Um, so I think that's really, really special. And um you know, and Stephen, you know, I really appreciate your honesty in the article and, and even now talking about mental health, because this is obviously one of the biggest trends that we're seeing with gap year students since, I mean, 
you know, mental health and um, student performance have always been like a, a, a topic of discussion. But obviously, since the pandemic, it's like twofold. It's just insane the amount of pressure and r ridiculousness that students have had to go through over the last two years. And, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges for students is they're, they have a hard time, like, noticing the symptoms of, like, when should they be taking a break and when should they be prioritizing themselves? And I'm curious, were there any symptoms or like experiences that you acknowledged or were aware of that kind of led you further to making a decision of a gap year? Yeah, I'd say what, maybe like the top three or top two, depending on how many I say, but I'd say first things first, um, just the marks piece, like when I saw that my marks were like, really deteriorating i think that was like the first sign that okay so something's not right because like i had i was able to maintain a high high marks for my first couple of years of school but then now with the shift to online it was kind of going down and i think for the most part a good number of students had that similar experience but then as i guess the next sign that i also saw was just the demotivation like i was not as motivated as i was to with my academics like with studying with just everything school related it's like I just lost all the motivation that i had um and, and i enjoyed school for the most part not, not really but for the most part only because i know i need it for, for where, where i need to go so that's where i guess the motivation came from i lost all that motivation so i think that that was a second uh sign second shift or difference that i saw within myself that kind of reinforced that you know what i need to probably take a break and i think the third thing too besides from low grades demotivation i think as well just the it's overall gut feeling like i, I think I, i'm not new to taking gap years i i want to make that clear i actually took a gap year after high school um awesome. after high school i actually took a semester off before i went to university and so i remember first even even before i made that decision to take a gap year in high school um there's so much so much negativity around this idea of taking a gap year and so uh, but I still did it because I thought that was best for me and it actually ended up paying off. And so I'd say even to like going back to even the, one of the original questions about deciding to take a gap year, it was not really a lot of thinking that I had to do because I'm like, I knew how beneficial the first gap year was for me and I knew it was just going to be much better and make sure I was uh, going to be able to go back to school much stronger. Um, but yeah, I see the signs, like this demotivation, low marks and just trusting my gut feeling that, you know what, I'm not feeling the same. I'm just feeling more lazy, my just mentally, more headaches, just not really yeah. present. I'm not paying attention as much. I'm hardly going hardly going to my classes because that just gives me more anxiety. I think like those type of things I, I was experiencing that just kind of reinforced that yeah, I need to take a break next semester. Mm. Yeah, that's huge. And uh that's really cool that this is actually your second gap. And you know, now that you're you're saying that you know there was a lot of negativity around that first gap. I'm curious, what were some people telling you? What were you? What was kind of the overall feeling of negative, like things being directed at you when you were taking the first gap? I wouldn't say partially directed at me, but more so just negativity in in the atmosphere in general about around the idea of just a gap year in of itself and anyone taking a gap year and that or oh, if you take a gap year you're not gonna want to go back to school if you take a gap year you're gonna be behind uh and yeah just you know academics like you're not gonna be around with your age mates like just all of these other things that were mentioned but i think it kind of goes back to knowing who you are and i knew i was gonna go back to school if i took a gap year either way because i have goals i know what i want to do with myself i knew that if I took a gap year, once again, I was going to be intentional and actually um, set goals and apply for scholarships and do all of that stuff, which was going to help me when I ended up getting to school, which it did help me. Um, but yeah, I think this negativity around gap years is just the idea that more, if you take a gap year, you're not going to go back to school. And if you take a gap year, you're like, there must be something wrong with you or there's some, there's some issue, or I guess, with you or whatever. But, all those type of things I, I really ignored because you know we're, we're all on different paths and I, I know why I need to do for myself that it's gonna benefit me and so far so good. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I just want to say like big ups on you for that because I know how especially with like having parents of color the stigma with taking a gap year is obscenely crazy. So like the fact that you're able to you know still look inside of yourself and say even though there are these like 
negative factors getting thrown my way and you're like nah i'm still gonna do this for me because i know this was best for me like big ups on you for that because not a lot of people would do that a lot of people would like fold under that pressure and go ah, okay fine i guess i'll just go I so i have to think people a lot of people fold under that pressure and then they end up going to school and getting terrible marks in their first year or they end up going to school just to drop out just to drop out yeah. after a couple of months and they waste all that money so it's like but it goes back to that intentionality like if you're gonna take a gap year like really set up the, your plans your goals as to what you want to do and like uh, i can 100 like percent say that those oh. folks who i know who set up their goals and plans um it's ended up it's ended up paying off for them yeah 100 percent. and i am like totally the example of being forced to go to school and dropping out <laughs> because it's it's not what i wanted it wasn't even the program i wanted to do i had to apply last minute because i was like planning a gap for so long and it was miserable it was miserable like i just like nothing about that year was enjoyable for me um and like and again like i'm i'm grateful for like my post secondary experience and how it led yeah. me to my gap and everything i'm doing now but it's it's the that the mental health side of that of being forced into something that you really don't want to do is even more severe and yeah. i'm curious like y'all are y'all are pretty self aware like there's a lot of like especially like as young people so like kudos to you because like i was not that self aware when i was 19 <laughs> but you know i'm i'm curious like did you what was those conversations initially with your parents then like what did that look like anthony i'm very interested to hear what you have to say <laughs> um it was yeah my mom didn't know i was taking a gap year till a few months into my gap year <laughs> uh, oh, i just told goodness. her i just told her yeah uh i'm going into school like i'm going in on in person second semester so she just thought like i had no classes for a semester um so i was just it, i kept her in the dust for a while and it's just because you know shout out to my mom my mom's like a very strong independent woman uh but like she's an immigrant parent came down put herself through school herself high school, got her diploma, um, went to school for nursing, single mom, you know, so she thinks school is like everything, like like her, to her school is like the, the end all be all. Um, and at first she didn't realize and didn't think that a gap year was possible, like what was the point of a gap year? Um, you already know what you wanna do, just do it, get it over with. Um, <laughs> but uh, and she also thought like the idea of oh once you take a gap year you're not gonna want to go back um so i really just had to get it through to her, like no i know that like i know what i want to do i know that i want to go back to school mm -hmm. it may not be for what we initially planned i like to be a lawyer may now it may to be it may be to be a teacher but like i know school is definitely going to happen mm -hmm. like that is something that is set in stone I'm not running away from school at all. It's something that I just really have to get that through to her. Um, after a little bit, she saw that I was actually staying productive <laughs> as we were talking about and like actually working towards goals. And she kind of was like, okay, as long as you're still working towards something on this gap here, I guess it's okay. And now she's super, super okay with it. So beautiful. it was a, it was a hard conversation, but yeah, <laughs> it, it had to happen eventually. Frozen again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I froze. Steven, Steven, you there? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. No. All right, cool. What, what, what about your parents? Yeah, I think my experience was, I think, it was positive. Like the sec, especially the second time around, it was positive. Like, uh, I don't know why, but I just didn't feel the need to say anything to them. Like until like a couple of weeks, so my, a month or two in, like it's like a couple of weeks into my gap year, I'm just like. It's whatever they're gonna see me home more often, so they'll ask you know, what's going on. Or go. so then when they end, ended up asking, you know, um, how school, whatever, I'm saying, oh yeah, I'm not in school. I'm taking a gap year, uh, and the response was good. It was just like, well, first was like, oh why, da, da, and I explained, and then it's just like, okay, because once again, like I've already shown to be productive nine times out of ten, and then I have already like sell my plans as to what I'm going to do. Like they know, you know, I have this job. And, mayor's office so on so for like i have all these plans i'm trying to do so um and they already know once again i have kind of like that end goal that okay i want to be a lawyer i want to do this i want to do that and obviously i'm i'm gonna make sure i fulfill that 
Um, and so, yeah, I think the reception was much more positive uh, and great. And um, uh, maybe deep down, it's like, go back to school, go back to school. But I think that overall, the, out, the outward expression, the outward oh, remarks were very positive. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to I'm going to recommend to those watching this recording, please talk to your parents before you take your gap year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll just save you the, uh, the mental space of worrying about having to having to tell them and all that. Just get it over with, talk to them and be on your way. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's also a great opportunity to prove to your parents that like, hey, like I am an adult and I'm going to make decisions for myself that make the most sense for my future. And if it's a break, it's a break. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's actually, uh, I don't have the statistic in front of me, but the larger percentage of students who take a gap year go back to school regardless. Um, so the small percentage that don't return are usually because they still haven't figured out what they want to do. Um, and there's nothing wrong with taking a second gap year. I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure both of you have had, you know, students in your classes that are much older than you because everyone is on their own journey. It doesn't matter how old you are when you're in class. Like learning is a forever journey. Um, so don't yeah. feel held back by that age bracket of like when you should be going to school and stuff because that is ridiculous if you are constantly living your life around what everyone else says that you should do and the mainstream thing how are you really going to be leading yourself up for uh, leading towards your own success and what you want for yourself so um you know exactly. one of the things i'm also curious about because as students of color you know it's uh sometimes like you know when i was in high school like a gap year wasn't really like a thing um and like it wasn't you know you wouldn't just say like i'm taking a gap like i would i said like i'm taking time off because like i hate my program like that was kind of like the way i i i communicated it and you know this terminology seems like it's becoming more of a norm especially across canada because it, gap years have always been kind of a thing in the us and europe uh but just curious like when were you introduced to the concept of a gap year and was that always the language and the terminology that you'd been using in your journey um, I guess like I kind of knew like I've heard of a gap year. I never really called it that. Like at first, I would just say I taken a year off, uh, taking a break from my studies. Um, I knew gap year was a thing. I never called it a gap year. Um, but I know when my sister, my oldest sister, um, she when she graduated, um, high school, there was no really because she took a a gap year. You can say now there was not really. Turned out, she was just like, "Yeah, I'm just not doing this right now." Yeah, because I don't know when she she's about how old is she? How old is she? About thirty something. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Okay. So not as familiar with it. Yeah, I'd say like yeah, it's like an older like this. I'm gonna take a year off, and I think those are the type of terminology. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take a year off, or I'm gonna take a victory lap, or a victory lap is kind of different because. They'll come back for another year of uh, a semester of high school afterwards, but technically you should be in post secondary. But people come back after this. All these different term terminology, but they got the core. It's just, I'm taking a year. I'm taking the time. Taking time off from school. I'm taking a year off. Or I'm taking a semester off from school. Um, and yeah, I think that's. And I forgot the uh, second half of that question. Some of our students of being like students of color I forgot that piece. But just, I was just curious off. around the terminology within like communities of color, um, like the yeah. gap year term. Yeah, I think it's just people just keep it simple. I am taking this, taking a semester off, or I think not necessarily. Not a lot of people use want to use the word year off, and I think like for me, I wouldn't really use year off. I just say taking semester off because I'm not take, I'm not, you know, not going to school for a whole three, six, five days. I'm just going not going to school for like four months. And so I think, yeah, most people around me will say I'm just taking a semester off. Yeah. Yeah, I know like a lot of, um, especially be, like just because of the, the way things are sometimes, like I know a lot of uh, my family members who needed to take time off just to work so that they could afford their post-secondary education. Like it wasn't it wasn't mentioned like I'm taking a gap year. It's like, no, I got to take time off because I need to work and afford my studies. Um, and yeah. I think that sometimes that becomes this like thing between um, like 
communities of privilege and then like communities of color because we have this like sometimes there's a lower income bracket that we're 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 struggling against and we have to work to pay for our our tuitions we don't have to just ride through the four years and not take the break to to pay our tuition fees so there's also that kind of that story and I've had that story. I've heard that story a lot around like not knowing that it was a gap year, but you know, they did take the time off to work and realizing that, you know, in that year, even though they were working and that was the main goal was to earn and save money for tuition, they were still doing amazing other things that, that, help set them up for success in their future, whether that was like getting a job that was more aligned towards what they wanted to do. Like, for example, Stephen, it sounds like you're doing some really, really cool work with uh, John Tory. So like, what does that look like in terms of like, how that might actually, you know, finding an opportunity through in a gap to set you up for success, but also earn money so that you are, yeah, you have like this really well-rounded gap. What does that look like for you? Yes, like right now I'm taking a double, a double major, like just the like folks know, like academically I'm taking a double major in criminology and poli sci, and so I'm very interested in this politics. And so, um, yeah, when I saw the opportunity, I made sure I right, for it. And so, thanks, I was able to get in. So, right now I'm just supporting the mayor on his uh, legislative agenda and, like, specifically on city council and um, the policy priorities he has at city council and just. Uh, this community engagement, community outreach, I've been supporting him on as well. Um, and uh, I find this is one part of the question I'm forgetting that you mentioned. But I think, um, yeah, can you repeat one of the parts? I'm forgetting it. Wait, sorry. I think it was the second point you, you You glitched on me. What did you say? There was, a part, there was a second part of your question that you mentioned that I wanted to touch on. Can you repeat it? I think she froze. Opportun a random I job. Oh no, am I? Okay, you're good now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, what I was saying is like you're you've you're doing you've taken up an opportunity that's not just like working at McDonald's or like working a random job. It's an opportunity that is something aligned mm -hmm. with what you're studying, aligned with what you want to do with your future. Yeah. And it's giving you that hands-on experience. So how, like that, that's quite an opportunity. So how has that even been kind of changing your perspective around like those next steps? Um, as, uh, cause you're just taking oh, yeah. a semester off, correct? It's just a semester? Exactly, just taking yeah. a semester, so I'll be back. Yeah, that's, that's a good question because I'm originally my time. Okay, I'm gonna go after that school, go to do my undergrad and then go to law school and then be a lawyer and then after be, be in politics. But then now I think it's kind of shifted to yes, after my good. undergrad, I'm going to probably just you know, maybe good. work in the mayor's office. I have to work in a political office where a uh, politician yes. after. So that it's kind of shifted good. my mind saying that and I might not even pursue law, uh, a law degree afterwards. Uh, we'll see. Yes, um, but uh, yeah, I think definitely it definitely does shift your perspective and shift um, your priorities, and not even in a bad way, because I think it enhances your passion and it, and it just um, enhances your passion and allows you to hone in and focus more on your passion. I think, uh, me personally, I really enjoy the political stuff, and so um, um, yeah, now they have this experience I have right now in the mayor's office, it's really uh, motivated me. Kind of my yeah, mind to probably like that not go to law school after and just probably go work for him after my high school. Amazing. Okay, so it's actually made it's it sounds like both of you have had already these beautiful experiences that are shifting the way you might now either continue your education or what it looks like after you're done your post secondary journey. Um, which is incredible because there's, because uh, I mean, imagine you do four years of the of your of the degree that you're currently in, and then you continue on with your plan, and then realize ten years down the road, actually, this is not what I'm interested. In. Um, what are some of the other topics of interest, and what are the things you can explore? And I'm really excited for both of you because uh, you're both doing really amazing work. So this is really exciting. Um, you know, as we as we wind down. I'm I'm also curious, like as you were leading up to your gap year, or even right now as you're in it, um, you know, have you con like have you chatted with like any like mentors or advisors, uh, maybe like other student groups, students of color, um, like I'm sure there's like communities within your universities um, 
uh, for students of color where there is more of like a community connection. Um, I'm curious if any of these kind of like support systems were a part of your journey either before or currently, or if you'll be looking to access any of these groups as you go back into post-secondary. Um, me personally, I haven't looked into any like support groups, any mentorship opportunities or anything like that. Um, currently, I am un unaware of any th at my school at University of Alberta. Um, but to be fair, I haven't also looked into it. I feel like I'm kind of doing okay, but I would like to kind of, I was actually talking with my old art teacher, um, high school art teacher yesterday about um, like risk getting a mentor to like lead me on this journey. Um, so it is something that I probably will be looking into in the in the near future. But as of right now, I haven't really spoken to anybody or done anything like that. They need to do a better job of telling you what's available at your university. <laughs> <laughs> it was just kind of like, yeah, you can take the year off. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, thank you. Oh. Yes. Actually, did you have to do any kind of like, did you need to reserve your spot for your next year? Like, did you have to put any any money down or anything like that? Or were you able to just take the break? No, I was just able to just take the break. Fantastic, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Steven, I'm not sure if you heard the question I was talking about, if you accessed any like mentors or community support groups, uh, specifically for like students of color before mm -hmm. going into your gap, or just um, if you've kind of been part of communities to support you as you make these transitions, um, within your post-secondary journey? Yeah, I've been a part of like community organizations already um, that have been like the support of my academics like high school. And I think uh, even like originally, like the doctor taking that gap year or you know, semester off or whatever, um, or came from them like even when I was in high school. And so um, like, they've just been overall supportive of just my academic and just um, uh, assisted me. Assist um, um, yeah, assisted me in my, my, just my journey just uh, my time away from school. Um, now in respect to like sports from school and like my actual school, like university and things of that sort. Uh, not that I've tapped into, I don't even think they're really meant, um, but I do speak a lot with my peers and like folks look like me who are uh, hard taking gap years uh, or who have, and I just try to pick their brain on their experiences as well, um, just as a way to just like reinforce to me that, okay, this is the right decision, um, but yeah. Awesome. Beautiful. And, you know, I guess as we, um, I'll open the floor to questions um, in like a couple of minutes, but I just want to, you know, uh, I really, I really loved the, what you, what you both had to say in your videos on the CBC uh, article, just around like what mm -hmm. advice you have for gap year students, because it was very authentic. Um, and I'd love, you know, you know, just thinking specifically for students of color and, you know, um, fighting their immigrant parents to like make, you know, to try and make their own path or, you know, struggling to have those conversations, unsure of what's possible for them. Um, you know, in Canada, what advice do you give them around, you know, their post-secondary journey and if they're stuck in a moment of confusion around what to choose? <laughs> you can go ahead, bro. Okay, uh, um, honestly, just like I said in the article is, if you are contemplating a gap year, I would just say take it um, because you wanna be able to figure out what you want. Even if you don't know what you, you wanna be doing within that gap year just yet, it doesn't make sense to go through with your education and pay and waste your money on something you're not even sure about. So I would say take your gap year um, if that's the case. Um, if it's a situation where there's something you want to do, but you're feeling pressured into doing something else, do what you do what you want to do. Do what you love, because at the end of the day, you're living your life for you. you do, you're not living it for anybody else. So you want I want you want to make sure that whatever you are doing, it's for your happiness, because you're waking up to do that every single day. And as much as you want to follow what your mom says or your dad says, at the end of the day, you're not living your life for them. And they're not experiencing the same things that you're experiencing and going through. So when you are making these decisions, make sure that you're being true to yourself. Um, really dig deep and think about what you want to be doing 
Um, and then from there, prepare. Um, make sure you are being productive and you are working towards those goals, um, whatever that may be. Uh, so that would that's my advice for anybody is just do what you want to do, but make sure you prepare for it. Beautiful. I think ultimately it goes down to like it's your life. Like, come on now, it's, it's your life to spread for our parents or friends or anyone might say it's like it's your life. Like he said, you're the one waking up, going to school, taking those classes, et cetera, et cetera. And so you're the one who it's your experience of your life. And so I feel like we got to make sure at the core of it, do what uh, we need to do um, to um, just support ourselves and better ourselves. But I guess uh, an advice I'd really give is the piece about being intentional. I mentioned it article like i can't actually that many times like that intentionality like i just I can't stress enough like don't take a gap year if you're just gonna chill and just kick up and not like, don't have any goals or plans you have but i think really as you first thought that comes to mind okay i think i might need a, a year off a start off start planning thinking hey what am i gonna do this month like, throughout a couple of months whatever that I'm going to be taking away from school and just make sure you maximize as much as possible and you're being productive uh, because I think even you yourself as an individual, like um, you're going to, after, let's say you kick up and don't do anything for four four months after like the, the last day of that gap, you're going to say to yourself, damn, I wasted all these four months for what? Like, you know, if you yeah. knew yourself are not even going to feel like you, the gap you was even worth it. You might as well went to school and got the credits and continue to progress. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately be uh, intentional and just plan and do what's best for yourself because um, yeah, like, trust yourself, trust your gut because you know when you know you know that our experiences, although family and friends and others might invalidate them and brush it off, and, like always keep pushing through, keep pushing through. Like it's like we we know our limitations and we know our limits, and so we really gotta put ourselves first and others second, third, fourth. Yeah, I think that's that's key. Absolutely. Thank you both for your words of wisdom and for being vulnerable and sharing your stories um, with us today. Um, I'm going to open the floor to any questions. Um, Christine? Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'll also I just check the Q&As. Of course I did. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yeah, no, no, we can. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to drop them in the chat um, or just unmute yourself and uh, jump in. Um, while we're waiting for questions to come in, I'll just make a note that following the event, our expo booths are open in the platform. So that is a great space to meet some of our gap year program partners. So exploring what is also possible for your gap year. Um, there's lots of opportunities in there from, um, you know, learning French on your gap year in uh, Quebec to tra traveling internationally. What does it look like to get a work visa to work in one of 32 countries that are available to Canadian students um, under the age of 35? Uh, so there's lots and lots in there to explore to see what's possible for your gap year. And of course, if you're looking for an awesome community of gappers from across the country and beyond, uh, we have our amazing Discord, our Gapper Connect Discord. You two should join, it's super fun. Um, we've got like a hundred and like almost 50 students in there, um, not just in Canada, but also the US and abroad. And it's this awesome space where everyone's just connecting, sharing what they're up to, sharing photos, keeping each other motivated, keeping each other accountable, um, which I think is so important, especially when you're on a gap year in a pandemic. <laughs> and it's really hard to like go and sometimes physically meet people and build that community. So this is a virtual safe space for gap year students to connect and thrive. Uh, so highly recommend joining in on that. And yeah. Yeah, and I'm excited. I'm going to be following up with you both after this because I'm like so excited about diving deeper into your journeys. Um, I would love, love, love to talk to you both about our CanGap Ambassador program because I think like getting doc, especially Anthony, I want to see all the amazing art you're making. If we can get that doc, <laughs> if we can get that documented and like all these experiences, like Stephen, what is it like a day in the life to go and work alongside the mayor? What does that look yeah, that like? Sounds, you sounds, <laughs> <That> sounds so. <laughs> <sweet>. <laughs> It'll be so, so inspiring for what is possible because usually the like the, the barrier in the gap year journey is like there's so much to do. So how do you make a decision um, that like decision fatigue can yeah. sometimes be overwhelming? 
Um, and uh, having kind of getting to see what everyone else is up to helps kind of realize that, hey, I can kind of do what makes sense to me. Like, I'm going to just lead that journey. It doesn't need to look the same as everybody else. Uh, so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions, um, but I know that things usually come in through our YouTube as well. So um, for our YouTube, for everyone who's watching on our YouTube right now, uh, after this is uh, not no longer live, um, feel free to drop questions into the comments. Feel free to join Gap or Connect to connect larger with our community. Uh, Stephen and Anthony, thank you so much for your time this evening. I'm so grateful and so honored uh, to have gotten an hour with just to hear your stories. Thank you so much for sharing. Of course, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we appreciate it a lot. It was uh, it was an honor to be invited here to be able to speak with you guys. Stephen, your story is honestly amazing. So motivating. Like you're honestly like the epitome of black excellence. <laughs> like for sure. <laughs> You are. Uh, so I, you're, I, doing, you're doing great. So yes. keep it up. Keep it up. You know, when I read when I read your part of the article, I was like, wow, this is he's doing he's doing big things, and I see some like bright things for your future. So keep doing what you're doing. I see big things for you coming up pretty soon. So I appreciate Absolutely. that, Matt, and much love to you, and uh, thank you much again for the opportunity and. Um, I keep grinding at me. I'm curious to see uh, where you end up as well. I won't lie; those picks that they took of you were really hard. Like you were like, like <laughs> Sean said, it, like Jasmine said, like you were really in your element. Like you were really in your element. And so Thanks. I say keep keep focused on that. And once again, I'm excited to see where you go. We shall connect on LinkedIn, IG, and all that. Yes. Stuff. Oh, 100. Yes. <laughs> You're reading my mind. You're reading my mind. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's like the most. It's like the the. The most special part of my job is like building this community because like we're not alone. We're not alone in these unique journeys. And I think we just have so much power when we are in full control of our futures and not just doing the mainstream thing. So I am very, very excited to see where both of you head next. Like y'all are so young. Like I feel really old sometimes talking to gap <laughs> year students. And it's so exciting to see where you'll head next. So yes, we will all connect um, and I'll send you guys an email and I'm looking forward to chatting again soon. Perfect. All right, thank you. Take care. All right. Have a good evening. Bye, Bye everyone. Thanks for listening.